Ralphie, the Fin Guy, here to talk about the HT330 and some awesome improvements that we've made. So you got a John Deere 173 horsepower engine that is driving these hydraulic pumps mounted to the engine, which are powering your hydraulic components. Agitators, two beefy agitators, hydraulic hose reel, and a hydraulically driven pump. We have eliminated our clutch on this model. When we went tier four final, it necessitated a larger hydraulic tank because of the components that we wanted to add. So we went from a 50 gallon tank to a 75 gallon tank and a larger footprint of engine. So we decided to move the engine to the front. When we get to the back, that's going to show you the advantages we now have because of the pump system. So we had more space for things to do back there. By putting the engine at the front of the machine, it created an opportunity with lots of room back here. I'll start by telling you we have a sacrificial nipple, if you will, here, connector that's nylon or plastic, so that in the event somebody forgets to disconnect when they're filling, they don't lose their whole fill port assembly, they just break off at this plastic piece that's easily replaced. Right above that, you've got a ball valve for opening and closing as you fill, and a very nice feature that we've added is a hose bib with a dial here, so that as you're filling up, you can open this hose bib and attach a sprayer, a regular old garden hose, spray down your tank. You'll see when we get up top that we also have one on the top of the deck. We have a hydraulic hose reel here, holding 200 feet of inch and a quarter. You could easily put inch and a half hose on here. You could put larger hose on here as well. It's our hydraulic block here where all our components come together and are powered. This machine also has air flush. So this little valve here, this actuator, is going to send air through this hosing so that somebody could easily clean out their recirculation line, the hose reel, or the tower. You'll also note, as I was talking about earlier, you've got a lower agitator towards the center of the machine and an upper agitator that's a little offset to the side. And you can see up there your agitator bearings. Our agitator bearings are much beefier now than previous models. They're robust, tested thoroughly for hundreds and hundreds of hours with no leaks. So we are confident that these agitator bearings are going to give quite a life and it's a great improvement over previous models. So here at the back of the machine I wanted to show you we, we have hydraulically driven hose reel in for retraction as well as out to assist so that someone doesn't have to pull that hose. You can push this button to facilitate the operator easily getting the hose out as far as he needs 200 feet or more depending on what you put on here and then of course in you'll also see later we have a remote control and that operator will be able to do all of those things with his remote here's your main drain plug for the tank and you'll also see we have ignition and an emergency stop back here so an operator could start the machine as well as stop the machine nice improvement on this machine is that we replaced the suction line valve that we used to have which was the large circular handle that took probably a good minute to two minutes to close and open to now being replaced by this knife valve if you will or slicer valve it's in the open position and all you have to do is pull it like so to close it they're very simple to operate we have built in the ability to easily swap from a centrifugal to a vortex on this machine you only need to remove bolts at this point, this point, remove a Victaulic coupling, a couple of bolts here, put a chain on here, a hook of some sort, and this whole assembly will come out and a new one can easily go back in. We have built it so that the centrifugal pump and the vortex pump accommodate the same footprint. The only difference being the actual pump itself. So in order to utilize the grinder, just open up your hatch, drop your seed and fertilizer in through the grate. You got a breaker bar here for those bags of lime and fertilizer. But when you're ready to put the mulch in, open your grate, cut your bales, drop them in the hatch, and you're going to notice that the grinder is going to work nicely. Those paddles protrude through the bottom of the basket and are going to cut the bales. So you just drop them right in, and the water curtain is going to be produced by the fill port. It's this diverter bar right here, 
it cascades water over the mulch as it's being ground up. All you do to open the barn doors for loading on the top of the machine is lift this latch. And this will allow your gate to swing out. You can load the top of the machine. This HT330 has enough storage space for six pallet spaces. You don't want to load six full pallets. Obviously, you can only go so high and you have to take into, the, into consideration the amount of weight that you have on the surface. But suffice it to say, there's a whole lot more storage space than there was previously. And this is the HT330. On the HT400, there's eight pallet spaces on the footprint. So this is the brand new patented long shot. We achieved 368 feet when using the centrifugal pump. No joke. We also have an access panel right here. In the unfortunate event that someone drops something in the, as they're loading through the hatch and they feel that they must get down in there and retrieve it, this would be your way. You remove these eight bolts and go down through there. Right above the access panel is this toolbox. It's a fantastic toolbox. Nice lid, closing system here. You've got a dry side and a wet side. So obviously you can put, after you're done spraying, all your nozzles in here and you can see plenty of nozzle storage. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven slots, varying sizes so that you can put different size nozzle bases in here and accommodate all the nozzles. Heck, you can even put a pair of wet gloves in there. And on this side, the dry side, Voila, I have my remote control that I was telling you about earlier, as well as other things that you want to keep dry. Keys, battery charger for your battery for the remote control, manual holder here, and a charging station. Charging station for not only the battery pack, but a USB. You could charge a phone if you needed. So back to the remote control, the operator has complete control. Can turn the pump on and off. Once the pump's on, he can communicate, or once the machine is on, he can communicate with the driver using the horn or communicate button. He can dial the pump from zero to 100 with no mistake where he is with pump spraying percent of flow. Okay, And probably one of the coolest features is the hydraulic reel. I can reel in or out, and it's neat that it's proportional, meaning the more I push, the more flow I give. So the faster I retract or the more I can assist as the hose goes outward. So just a really cool feature on an ergonomic belt to put around his waist. E-stop and power. And again, rechargeable battery. So just a really cool system that really puts a lot of control in the hands of the operator. So we have this new control system, quite easy to operate. Turn your switch. The system will tell you, hey, system's turning on, please wait. It's very user intuitive. After a few seconds, it'll say if it's ready to start or not. And this one is ready to start. All I've got to do is push this ignition button. And it's running. I now have all my controls, agitators, pump. The moment I hit something, the system is going to throttle the engine all the way up to give the power to the hydraulics, and then I'll be able to control the speed of those functions, either agitators with these buttons or the pump with this dial. So watch as I hit something like, say, the lower agitator. And as you can see, the engine throttle has gone all the way up. I can change my agitator direction from mix to spray to travel. In travel mode, it's going to move the agitator at a very slow speed just to keep the slurry moving while we drive. And when I hit it another time, it sends no power to it. I can control the speed of the agitator through these buttons. Once I hit this pump button, I've got my dial all the way down. It'll throttle up. And then if I want to spray slurry, I've only got to turn this dial. And that's how the control panel works. You also have the option for codes. You see the F here for fin. These would be fin codes. 
And there's also settings in here. I can change the language from English to Espanol. Okay? And as I talked about before, we've got Pro Mode and we've got Beginner Mode. So I've got it in Pro Mode. That's going to enable me to do things that I want at my pace. And when I hit it into Beginner Mode, I hit New Load, and it's going to tell me. It's going to walk me through things step by step. Okay? And if I say yes, it throttles up, and it tells me, hey, start your water, load your mulch bales. And then when I get done that step, I hit this, and it tells me to load my seed. Then I get done that, it tells me load fertilizer and additives, fill tank to the desired level. And when I get done that, it tells me, hey, you need 15 minutes to mix. I can also reset my timer, I can pause, or I can escape out of this mode if I like. I can hit home, and everything stops. And I can go back and change it over to pro mode and do these things at my own pace in any order that I like. Thank you for watching this introduction to the new Titan HT Hydro Seeders from Finn. Click subscribe to stay informed on all the new videos that are coming and be sure to follow Finn on your favorite social media.